Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to our Monday night workshop in July. Hello, everyone here. Hello, everybody online. I know that since we have it online, we have more people watching online than show up. Stop it. Come here. We want to see your happy faces. Thank you. <laughs> Anyway, I wish to express my gratitude for those of you, that was for David. I want to express my gratitude for those of you who did shut up, show up, <laughs> and those of you who are online. I am extremely tired tonight. We're doing an Omega-4. I'm so happy that we are actually doing an Omega-4. It's been five years since the last Omega-4 that we did. It's been a long time, so I'm very um, excited to have that. We have a great group of people in there. Some of you are here tonight. Thank you for taking out your time to join us. I was going to do the schedule. Oh, Omega-2. We are in need of getting participants to show up for Omega-2. Register for Omega-2. It is on July 12th. 12th. July 12th. Thank you, David. July 12th, it, which is in two weeks. So if you are interested or if you know anybody that is interested, please show up or sign up because we are less than half and we really would like to have this one going. It's the last Omega-2 of the year. So if that's something that you're interested in, welcome, come on down. If that's something you're interested in, please register and join us. That takes care of that. And then there is a Wednesday workshop. <coughs> Excuse me, there's a next Wednesday workshop, which will be on July 21st. Is that right? <laughs> it's my human calendar <laughs> on July 21st that will be online only and uh, quite honestly I don't remember what I said the topic was so I'm um, will be as interested to seeing it as you are so tonight's topic is called using the button the pause button using the pause button now recent oh let me just read this quote I know I'm gonna massacre this name but it's called Giolami Apollinari? Has, if, does anybody know? Does anybody know that? Good, then I said it right. Okay, so <laughs> he has this quote which I love. It says, now and then it's good to pause in our pursuit of happiness and just be happy. I think that's very, uh, a very accurate quote because sometimes we get so consumed with trying to get something we forget to stop along the way. You know the old saying, stop and smell the roses? It goes along with that line. So recently, I've been um, had events that have caused me to pause and reflect on my life. And I really am quite surprised on how little reflection I do on a daily basis, knowing that's something that we should do. We talk about it. I can't even tell you how many times I've told people in the classroom, pause. And yet, I haven't built it into my daily life. It's, it's actually funny. I was thinking I've been doing the work for over 28 years, 28 years I've been doing the work, but I don't pause to see what I've been doing, how I've gained any knowledge, any information, do I need any altercation, I'm just work, 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 work. It's like I took the word the work literally and just do the work. So I was thinking about how I've um, created a list, a life of routines, which I feel like some of you can probably relate to this. You have a routine to go to work. We have a routine when we get up in the morning. I have my daily routines. I have my meditation routine. I have eating routines and sleeping routines, workout routines. There's routines. Everything is a routine. And when you get involved in routines, it's very easy to go mechanical. You don't have to think anymore because you just go. I mean, how many times do we actually think when you brush our teeth? I'm going to grab the toothbrush. I'm going to take the top off the toothbrush. Now I'm going to squeeze. We don't think that. It's just an automatic routine. We just do it automatically. So I, I think that's where I came to the awareness that my life was a routine. And in that, I was being very mechanical. Now, I know this is not an arrogant statement. I know I'm educated to, enough to understand pause. Everybody is. We know you should pause. So I, I understand that. Pause. And then I think to myself, why don't I pause if I know that I'm supposed to pause? Sometimes I'm, like I know meditation, that's the easiest way to pause, you meditate. So I know, go, sit down and meditate. But in my meditations, I 
have a routine. So I sit down and then I go through everything I'm supposed to get to. And then when I get to the place that you're supposed to pause and just be, oh no, I've got other things I have to do and okay, time to go. And then I, so it's like my meditation is just to get me to the place to pause and then come back. I don't actually stay and pause. So I was thinking of this the other day. It's, it's kind of funny. <laughs> um, well, let me just stick with what I was going to say here. So uh, that's why I love the, about the quote. I think I'm searching, and I'm just going to use the word enlightenment. It could be expansion capacity. I'm searching for enlightenment so much that I'm not even recognizing any enlightenment or awareness because I'm too busy trying to get to it. I'm too busy trying to meditate <laughs> that I'm not meditating, but I've got the routine down. I got the candle and the incense on my little cushion in a quiet room and the little music playing. It's all there. Every morning I've got a beautiful little place to sit in, but I never do it. <laughs> I mean, I do to the pause and then I turn around and come back. So typically <laughs> what my morning looks like, this is actually funny. I was thinking about that, how I would typically, recently I've been getting up a little bit before five. I thought, you know, because we like to go for a bike ride in the morning, it gets a little hot. So we try to do, get out the door by six, 630, because it does get hot. We ride about an hour, I do about 14 miles. So <laughs> I get up at five, maybe 440. I go make some tea. I get my stuff ready to go into my meditation room. I grab the tea, I bring it into my meditation room, I close the door, I've got all my books ready, and all of a sudden I go, oh, I forgot to set the timer. So I take my phone and I set it because I let my tea steep for 20 minutes, it's two cups. I set the timer for 20 and then I go, oh, oh, there's a message. And then I click on the message and then, oh, wait, wait, oh, there's a notice, I wonder what that's about. And then before I know it, the timer's going off. So 20 minutes has passed. I'm like, oh, darn, timer. I turn that off and put the phone down. So I'll grab my, um, I have a gratitude book that I journal every day. I'll journal different gratitudes. So I pick up my gratitude and I'll start doing that. And oh, yeah, yes, I'm very grateful and I'm grateful. Oh, a message. Oh, who's that? No, I don't need that. Oh, wait, maybe I do. <laughs> pick up the phone. Off I am again. And oh, that's nice. Oh, I didn't see that. And oh, I should respond to this one. No, I don't really. Oh, I should do my gratitude. Yeah, let me just finish this note. I'm not kidding you. Another 40 minutes maybe goes by and I'm like, oh wait, wait, I'm supposed to be gratitude. And then I pick up my book and I realize I haven't finished my gratitude and there's still five other things I need to do. So now I'm begrudging that I picked up the phone. So I put the phone down and now I'm herringly trying to be grateful. I'm forcing my gratitude. Yeah, I'm grateful for this. Wait, 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 one more. What did I do yesterday? Yeah, that's fine too. I'll be grateful for that. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. That's what I'm doing. In my meditative room where I'm supposed to be in a meditative state, I'm going, I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful. I'm forcing, I mean, forcing gratitude. That, so I do that. I put a cloud. Okay, good. I got that done. Let me go do some other stuff. And sure enough, then a text will come in or an email. Oh, I know I've been waiting for that. I mean, and again, and I'm like, I should just not even bring the phone in the room, but I need the timer. So, or, you know, the watch or anyway. So then I pick up my meditation book and all the other stuff I start working through. And then I look over, it's 7.15. Now it's going to be too hot to get outside. I haven't even started the meditation yet, or I've gone to the pause part. I'm like, okay, never mind. I don't have time. Let's get, get out of here and get back to where I go. And as soon as I get back in the house, like, like maybe 7.30, I'm not getting on my bike now because it's like 90 degrees outside already and I'm not riding that weather uh, over an hour. That's how my mornings have been lately, which is so embarrassing because I'm like, I know I'm supposed to. And then I think, well, let me catch up during the day. So I'll do the breakfast routine because we have a routine for breakfast. So I'll start the breakfast routine. Mark will come out, get his coffee. I'll get everything going, a couple hours will go by and I'll try to sneak in some more disciplines, but it's never in a peaceful moment. It's, oh, I got five minutes, let me see if I can fill it in. And, and that doesn't seem to be very, um, I don't think educational is the correct word. It doesn't seem to be very beneficial because I'm rushing and we shouldn't rush, we should pause, which I know, pause. It's the idea you were supposed to pause. So a very dear friend of mine, she um, gave me this quote. 
her husband had written this little piece of paper she handed it to me and I was thinking wow this is something I need to remember so I just want to read it to you because he's just a, such a sweet man I love him so it's the ethereal winds of the spirits touched my soul today where have you been our brother we, where are you going two simple questions yet I had no simple answer as a physical being I could look back and see my life story as a spiritual being it is much more difficult to look back and see the path my spirit has been wandering to the future hmm it's even more difficult to see where my path leads in both realms the path of the spirit is the one I wish to follow but the material being stands in the way and beckons to the physical realm look where we are look what we've got we've got a great house we've got trophies is what he wrote I've got treasures and comforts and I'm well cared for won't I miss these yet I ask not the spiritual also will not the spiritual provide for me as well the hurdle for me to overcome is the dedication and the commitment of that will be need to be exerted to follow this path now the reason why I like this it wasn't just pausing but he had an awareness and the awareness happens in the pause and that's what really captured my attention knowing that he had a moment I'm reading somebody's awareness in the moment he paused and he had this light bulb go on and I get to read it now and then I thought about George how he had so many moments where he paused this organization is based on because he paused and created so in those moments we're missing out I'm missing out because I'm not pausing so that's the idea that I was thinking of how do I find insights like this if I don't pause because it's not like I've never had moments of enlightenment I have I've had tons of them but they've all been when I've paused and if I forget to pause I miss the wind whispering to me or nature calling or what like I miss it because I'm not pausing I'm too busy doing instead of pausing and being now naturally we can't just pause the entire life away either because you know if you're watching a video game and you hit pause that's how people stay for the rest of their lives unless you hit the play again so naturally you have to have both and I was thinking about a remote the remotes that we have now even iPhones I mean the I we have an iTV and so that's such a strange little remote but there's you know, clearly a pause button and it doesn't even say pause anymore it's just those two little things but we know that means pause it's like we're all getting used to just pausing that's what you should do anyway so I experience how do I experience these I remember when um, George told me about he used to get up at three o'clock in the morning every morning every morning three o'clock in the morning he'd get up and sit at his computer now this is back in the day where they have the old big huge towers and the monitors that were green screen not blue the green ones <laughs> so he'd sit there and when you turn it on it would be green and the little thing would be blinking the cursor would be blinking waiting for you to go <laughs> so he'd sit there and he said he'd sit there and put his hands on it hello he would put his hands on it and he'd wait and he'd wait and he'd wait and nothing would happen now if that was me after about 10 minutes I'd get up and go do something but not him he'd sit there and wait and wait and sometimes what he would do is he'd have books out in front of him and he'd just glance and see a word and try to get inspired and nothing would come and then sometimes he said he'd be disappointed where he'd be sitting there for hours and nothing now I don't think I have that dedication that he did but he was able to when he let go then a great inspiration would come it would be the times when he didn't try to force it it would show up but when he tried to force it like well maybe I'll just read this and see if there's something I could get inspired it wouldn't show up he would already have a thought going on in his head so when I was thinking about him I often think about that when I sit to write I think you know am I sitting here thinking I gotta get this done or letting this inspired and come through me instead of forcing it I was talking to one of our staff members this weekend and she was saying how she was trying to read me in the room like how do you know what to say and where to go and I'm like I don't know I've just been doing it for so long I can't tell you it's just but she's sitting there and she's going well you do this here and you do that there <laughs> and that's what really got me thinking about observing pausing is in the observation so you pause and you observe and so she's observing and I'm like stop 
observing me. <laughs> Let me observe myself. You can go observe yourself over there. Anyway, <laughs> so when it comes to the pause, that's the question I've come to ask myself. Have I reached a point in my life that I no longer wait? I fill my life with getting things done and I'm surrounded by to-do lists. What would my life look like if I stopped and made a to-be list? Instead of a to-do list, make a to-be list. Do I even know what that means? I mean, I think that would be a good thing to consider how to be. Like, are there bullet points that I could write to create a list? Another to-do list on how to be list. <laughs> but are there, are there things that I can do to be, or is it just being? And I, I'd have to disengage my brain. That would be a good question to ask myself. So, <clears throat> I'm jumping around here, so let me just get back to where I was. Uh, as I said, I can't tell you how many times I've been in the classroom talking about, it sounds like you need to just take time just to be. And so it sounds like I need to listen to myself when I tell people just to be. So I've taught the concept of the pragmatic pause. Has anybody heard of this? The pragmatic pause, it's for speaking. So I've taught it to public speakers, I've taught it to CEOs, executives, the pragmatic pause is a way to capture the audience's attention. And it's called a pragmatic pause because you intentionally pause, like I just did. If you don't have a pause and you continue speaking, what you're going to end up doing is you're going to overload the person who's listening to you. And sometimes the information that you really want them to get is not going to happen because they're too busy talking and there's no pause inside. Although I tried to slow down on that one. But that's pretty much what a pragmatic pause, without a pragmatic pause. And then if you have too long of a pause, you kind of lose people. <laughs> it's a little awkward <laughs> and you might lose the intention. So you have to learn the appropriate pause duration. How do you learn that? Well, you practice naturally. There's practicing. I, there's exercises I give people to practice on how to do the pragmatic pause. There's rhythms and you tie it in with tonality. And of course you emphasize things like I'm doing with your hands, body posture. There's so much that gets involved in it but it all boils down to the pragmatic pause. So as a speaker, I teach people to pause speaking. Naturally, it would make sense that we'd have to pause on other levels as well. So pausing speaking, can I add the same techniques of the pragmatic pause to my spiritual level, let's say? Because if we really do think about pausing, we pause in everything that we do in our lives. So um, like the physical realm, our digestive system. There has to be a pause for the assimilation to happen. An apple doesn't just travel through your body. It's got to assimilate. There's got to be a pause. If you're constantly eating all day long and do not give your body time to assimilate, you literally are going to miss out all the nutrients that you're putting in your body because it's just going to flush right out. Your system's just going to just keep going. It's actually unhealthy to do that. Then, if we don't pause, let's say if you don't pause when you're working out, <laughs> you have to, otherwise you're going to do physical damage. If you don't pause and stretch, pause and recoup, recover, you're going to injure yourself. We have to pause emotionally. Have you ever been in a situation, or, well, let's just say an argument. Have you ever had an argument, it's getting intense, 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 intense. If you don't pause, what's going to happen? It's going to be emotionally fueled and it will be go from the next level from argument to explosion. We were sitting here earlier and there's a um, divorced, separated couples group down the hall. <laughs> and so I hear a woman and I hear like loud shouting and I'm like, is someone hurt? Does somebody need something? And then Mark walks back in the door and goes, well, I guess she's going through a separation. <laughs> she's on the phone louder and louder. And I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, it was down the hall. <laughs> she's not in here. It's none of you. <laughs> but it was down the hall. And, but that's what happens. If we don't take that pause, it's going to escalate and escalate. And then before you know it, you're saying things you don't really mean and doing things you really don't mean to do. So that's emotionally. Mentally, you have to pause too. If you've ever been in school, when you're studying, you reach the point where you can't read anymore and you don't understand what you're reading even though you see the words. So you have to take time and, or sometimes you even take time, you take the time to assimilate the thoughts. Hmm, what does this mean? Like, um, I love the show, The Big Bang Theory. They're um, theoretical physicists. So their job is just to theorize. I think that's great. 
Like they just sit to think. So here's the thing, well, how do I think about this? Well, what do we think? And you're creating it. That all takes time. So there's the pause that they have in that moment as well. So if it takes time for physical, emotional, mental, then it naturally has to take time for spiritual. So when it comes to the spiritual time, how do we know how much that is? Well, the same thing has to be true for the way that we practice the pragmatic pause as speaking. There's got to be a rhythm, and then there's got to be a practice. So before I go on any further, I forgot to have you guys talk to your buddy, talk to somebody about the idea of pausing. So first, when was the last time you had an aha moment, and what were you doing? So talk to your group right there. When was the last time you had an aha moment, and what were you doing? Pragmatic pause. If you're speaking, you got to stop to breathe. Right? Really? Just take a moment and exhale. Really well. That's what came to my mind. Twentieth. It starts on third. Oh, the Wednesday night workshop. Twenty-fifth. Thank you. Well, I guess you're done talking. <laughs> that was a very obvious pause. <laughs> um, I was going to ask you a question. How many of you have ahas or awarenesses in the shower? You know, you're taking a shower and all of a sudden your head, oh, I got this. It happens to almost everybody. My husband said he wants to create an invention 
where you can have like a whiteboard in the shower that's not going to like rinse off with the so you can just write because he, he comes out sometimes and he's like blah, 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 blah. so sometimes people do they have great awarenesses in the shower and the um the research that i read about it they attributed to the fact that your mind is disengaged because most of us have a showering routine and we don't think about it Sometimes I'll, I'll go, did I just shoot shampoo my hair? I can't remember. <laughs> because my mind is off going someplace else or I'm in an insight. And then I'll forget, what, what stage was I at? Where's, if I have the razor in my hand, then I'm, which leg was I on? <laughs> so I got to a point now, if the razor's in my right hand, I'm on the right leg. If my razor's in the left hand, I'm on the left. That's a, I can't help about the shampoo. I mean, it does, so sometimes I'm triple shampooing my hair was that just body wash that I just put in my hair I've done that a very a lot of times too they all look so similar I, I used to have the thing on the wall where it had the body wash shampoo and condition that made it so easy you just went one two three now all the bottles are all you don't need to know this never mind so <laughs> the idea about the pausing is essential it's necessary so um, I heard Dave talk about music. I forgot to mention that. The music is so important. If you don't have pauses in music, what will you have? Uh, noise, it, right? It's noise. So the thing that changes noise to sound is the pause. So when we have those pauses, it ends up now we have sound. Without the pause, it's just noise. I forgot about that. That's so important. The same thing when you're reading. A period is a pause. A comma is a pause. The punctuation marks give us pauses. Otherwise, everything just blends together. Actually, the spaces between the words are pauses as well. So we know there's the beginning and end of one word. So pauses are surrounding everywhere. They surround us everywhere. It's, we just need to, I need to look at them. <clears throat> now, as I said, if I were truly searching for enlightenment, oh, I forgot to check. Did everybody find the last time they had a great awareness? Ever, did anybody? Did you all have an awareness? What was your awareness, Ahmad? Um, I was swimming and I just thought about some cool idea and then I implemented it. it <clears throat> uh, so it was a work idea? Yeah, sort of. Yeah. Okay, that was vague, thank you. Someone else? <laughs> did somebody else have an awareness? Yeah. You awarelessness yeah. people? Yeah. Linda, that's great. So usually if there's something we're working on, they, t they typically say, stop thinking about it. And when you stop thinking about it, all of a sudden it'll pop back into your head the answer. That's the pause that we need at times. Absolutely, that's great. So when we have those awarenesses, it's in those moments of pauses that we're looking for. And sometimes we're not even at like, like what you said, if I'm going to sleep and I forgot I was even thinking of the question and all of a sudden the answer comes up and it's kind of startling, right? And then you get excited. <gasps> oh, that's it. And then you want to write it down real quick. So we have to allow myself to have those pauses. And then for me, at least it seems, when I'm in the pause, stop filling my pause. Be in the pause. I'm easily distracted apparently by my phone. <clears throat> or my watch <laughs> or my tablet <laughs> oh no I've turned into one of those people <laughs> so recently within the last six months I've had a series of events that have occurred that have left me um, in a very unusual situation uh, I'm very stagnant I have a lot of time on my hands and I'm not accustomed to having I, since the day I started working, I've always worked two jobs. So I've always had busy, 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 go to Omega, do something, something, something. And now it's like everything came to a halt, physical injury happens and halt. And now I have this time on my hands. I don't like it. <laughs> so I'm filling it with stuff that isn't purposeful. I'm aware it's not purposeful, but I don't care. I'm tired, I'm in pain. I just want to distract myself. I'm aware that I'm intentionally distracting myself. So I've been toying with this idea, is it appropriate or is it valuable to intentionally distract yourself to get through a day, a month, a, a period of time? Is it appropriate? Well, George used to say, if it exists, it has value. So 
if I intentionally distract myself, intentionally distract myself, not being distracted by email, I mean, if I intentionally say, no, nope, I'm going to go do this, this, and this, even though I know it's not purposeful, but this is what I want to do because I want to not be feeling the way I'm feeling, is that helpful? I actually think it is. I think there's a time where I can put my mind in a different place so that the rest of me I'm not constantly thinking, oh, I'm in pain, I'm in pain. I'm in. I think it's okay to distract myself. But the question is for how long? Where's the time limit on that? Do we get to a place where we become comfortable in distracting ourselves and forget about the things that we need to do and then things pile up and pile up and pile up and pile up? Then what do we do? Then when you go back to do it, you're like, oh gosh, that's a lot. I'm going to go back over here again. <laughs> Hire a maid. <laughs> Did I make that too sound like maid? <laughs> we need a maid. <laughs> so that, that's the thing I've been thinking about. It's been a very strange and uncomfortable position that I've been in. Stagnation is really what I'm faced with is stagnation. And I know if you don't move in stagnation, you're going to start to go into disintegration. I'm totally aware of that. But I'm wondering, isn't stagnation considered a pause? It would seem like it is. And if I'm doing an intentional pause, is that helpful? I know that we're supposed to be able to pause, but how long? I'm, again, I'm back to that question. So I've been thinking, like, not this last week. This last week was so incredibly busy and purposeful, but maybe, let's say, two or three weeks prior. What have I been doing? Have I been filling my time? And then in the back of my head, you know you could be doing this, you know you should. I hear George going, hello, I'm waiting for you. <laughs> I visit him in my meditation sometimes. He's probably sitting there going, <laughs> I don't know if he is or not. But anyway, so I know in the back of my mind, I also have those lists. I know I've got to do this. I know I've got to do that. I know I had to prepare for this. And, I, and then what's happening is my mind gets filled with the things that I know I'm supposed to be doing and I'm not in the moment of pausing anymore because I'm thinking of the things that I have to be doing. So the whole purpose of me intentionally pausing is not pausing anymore as well. So I've been struggling with this, like I said, for a couple of months now. It's been um, um, an arduous task <laughs> to find value in the events that I'm going through right now. So the question I ended up asking myself was, how often do I overlook a pause that's natural instead of forced? Because there are natural pauses that we have. So how often do I overlook the natural pauses while I'm seeking a forced pause, where I'm intentionally trying to pause? And which one has value? Well, if I go back to what George was doing in the middle of the night, working, if he forced it, it may not have come or it took longer, but if it was just a natural, he had the awareness. So then I think, okay, how do we find a natural pause? So that's my next question for you to talk to your buddy. How do you find natural pauses in your life? Go ahead, please.
All right, if I can have your attention, please. Thank you. <clears throat> Did anybody come up with the answer of how to find a natural pause? Now you want me to do it. Great, thanks. <laughs> yes, sir. We talked about beauty. Mm -hmm. Could be in the natural world, in nature, in the sunset, in the ocean, in a tree or a flower. Could be in a human, a person's face, interaction that you see. But in those moments, beauty of any sort and naturally and automatically cause me to be present in the moment and past and future seem to disappear for a while. Absolutely correct. So nature is a beautiful illustration. You see, the other night we had an incredibly beautiful full moon when we were leaving here after we set up for the program. I mean, I'm in the middle of a conversation. You stop because it's just so enamor. It's just like, oh my gosh, look how beautiful that is. So you're right. Nature can stop and capture our attention in the pause. Anyone else? Can that be considered? Um, that's a natural pause, and yes, we can have a nat an aha moment in the natural pauses, right? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I guess just being attuned to one's own energy level, mm -hmm. interest level. So, give me an example. So, reading, you know, you know, you, you know I know I'm getting tired. Maybe I'll make it to the end of the chapter. But my real pause is I'm. My mindset is I'm. The last couple pages of the chapter aren't really. No, I'm, I'm, I'm already pausing. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so being in sync with my own, yeah. what's happening with my body. Okay, great. Pa David, did you have one or you're just questioning? No, okay, no, thought you were going. <laughs> All right. Just uh, as a mason, I had to be able to look ahead in time and I'd have that problem and I'd go to sleep at night, wake up in the middle of the night. That the time in between falling asleep and getting that aha moment Pause. Absolutely. So we could actually say sleep is a natural pause. If, if we, for those of you who get to sleep, 
<laughs> throughout the night. <laughs> but sleep is a natural pause. It, it actually is what our body does. We go to, it shuts down and we pause. So sleep is another natural pause. Those are great answers. I was um, wanting to also give the indication that a pause does not mean you give up. Because some people say, forget it. Uh, I was thinking the last time I did a, um, a corporate training, we were doing this activity, very simple little activity, blindfolded geometry. And this one gentleman was just so frustrated, forget this. And he threw the stuff on the ground and took his blindfold off. That's giving up. That's like, I think if he would have just sat, took a couple of deep breaths and just surrendered to the moment, he may have been able to accomplish the task. So I think that pause and surrendering are connected, but not giving up. I think giving up is you're losing the moment. I was um, also thinking about when I played softball in my early years, I was very fast. I was a fast runner, I'm a sprinter. So it was, <laughs> not anymore, I'm a turtle now. But when I used to play, I used to play fast pitch in New York, we played fast pitch. When I first came to Arizona and I joined a softball team and they had this thing called slow pitch and the ball goes all the way up in the air and then come, I'm like, what the heck is that? It was such a straight, you didn't need to know the story either. Anyway, so fast pitch like baseball. So I'm the center fielder and I'm fast. And if the ball's going back, I'm gonna run and try to catch it or in. And my coach was so wise. He said to me, Anne Marie, when the ball is hit, count to three before you move. Because you're so fast, you're overrunning it or underrunning it. Because you just, I mean, not underrunning it, I'm overrunning it. So I come in too, or I go too far back. So he said, stop, count to three, then run and take off like a bat out of hell, go. And that really improved my game. I sat and the ball would hit, one, two, three, go run and that was really an awareness in my mind that I don't have to just go immediately and I was thinking about if you've ever seen a baseball game when guys are in the bat in the outfield they're not running and all of they're standing there waiting and then when they judge it then they adjust where they're gonna go so it's not like there's constant movement there seems to be a bit of a pause before they actually align where they're going to go I also thought about the um, quote by Rollo May some of you may know this the human freedom human freedom is the ability to pause between stimulus and response. That's what Rollo May says. And in that pause, we determine which way we wish to throw our weight. So we pause. Here's a stimulus, here's a response. I could react or I could stop and think. Well, if I do this, this is going to happen. If I do that, that's going to happen. That's a pause as well. That's an intentional pause. It's really not forced because you take that breath and you go, okay, what do I do? So that's the other thing that's a natural pause as well, our breath. And this is why a lot of people put meditation connected to breathing. If you have that breath where you're conscious breathing, where we've been teaching you how to do a conscious breath, you breathe in for a certain amount of time, you hold it for a certain amount of time, you exhale for a certain amount of time and hold that. And intentionally or initially they say that the idea is to get, you start off with three and you get yourself up to seven, a count of seven or a count of 10. Depends on how much time you practice meditating, but it's the pause. The pause is connected to our breath. I know I've said this before, there is a split second when you inhale and then exhale where the uh, avia, the, the lung things, the things that are inside your lungs that change oxygen and carbon monoxide. So when you inhale, oxygen comes in, carbon goes out. It all happens like that, but there's a pause for that to happen. In order for that change to occur within our lungs, it's that quick, but it's a small pause. So when you inhale, there's a stop, and then there's the exhale. So our body is a great illustration of natural pauses. And that's what I think about when it comes to a natural pause. Our breathing is natural. Now, the last thing I want to mention is the idea of our spiritual growth connecting to a pause. But then we have to think of this differently. You remember I mentioned earlier when you freeze a video, everything stops, the pause stops? Well, on the opposite side, in the spiritual realm, if you don't pause, it stops. So if I never pause here, I'm not going to get time to get over there. So I actually have to pause to be able to tap into the spiritual side. So that's a little out of the box thinking, because normally we think pause, stop. But in the spiritual realm, pause, go. Because when you pause, then you allow a flow if I can use the term, the flow, and then I could resume. If I don't pause, the spiritual will disintegrate. 
because there's no attention being given to it. So if I'm not pausing here, nothing's being connected there. It sounded much better when I wrote it this morning. <laughs> so we must pause in one realm in, in order for the other one to flow freely. If we don't pause in one side, the other one gets stagnant. So it, it's a balance. That's what we have to find is the balance in the pauses. Now, when it comes to pausing, as I mentioned earlier, how do we um, prevent ourselves from being distracted? What do you, I guess what I'm asking, what do you do to prevent yourself from being distracted? So talk to your buddies about that. What do you do to prevent yourself from being distracted? Or maybe you don't get distracted. Go. <laughs> David said pay attention, that's good. <laughs> If I pay attention to what I'm doing, then I have single-minded purpose, and I'm, I don't forget, you know, I have the same trouble she does with the shower in the morning, because I wash my hair or didn't. But if I was paying attention to my actions, then... I would find that so All right, if I can have your attention, what are some of the things that you came up with? What do you do to not be distracted? Pay attention, I heard. <laughs> yes, sir. If I actually pay attention, it means I'm losing the pause. So it's kind of like when you're dreaming and then you wake up and then you want to go back to the doorway. So whatever it is, whether it's short or long, whatever it is, it is. Anything I do is going to dis uh, disrupt, it, disrupt it and it's going to be gone. Okay. So I should not force pay attention. It has to be natural for whatever the duration it is. It is. Okay. All right. Can I say acceptance then? Just accept what's happening? Is that where you're going on that? I'm not sure. What I mean is like if I'm like uh, I got something and then I those the moment that I'm not paying attention, that's the real pause. Oh, oh got it. Okay. So it's when the distraction brings you to a pause or you're aware that you're when paused. I, when I become aware, that's when I got it. I'm, I'm, I'm lost. Okay. I lose it. All right. Good. Someone else? Easier? <laughs> For example, when I'm reading books, especially the books that are kind of difficult, right? Um, I, I don't understand a paragraph. And I, I said, uh, I actually close the book and I say, okay, let me think about it. what I do trying to say. Right? I mean, what, what, 
what, what are they trying to basically convey, right? And then uh, I think about it and I don't get it. And while I'm thinking about it, I said, maybe if I read it again, it will actually give me the answer I'm looking for. So I kind of, my thought and the material that I'm trying to pass about mm -hmm. kind of causes me to uh, interrupt my, my pass. Okay. All right. That happens very often. Okay. Good. Anyone else? <laughs> yes, sir. So one thing for me that is kind of similar to what I'm not said is that there, I, I do have some moments where I feel the past and future that is on my mind sort of goes away. I'm very completely present in the moment. And I have this sort of inspired, temporary moment that is seems to be a, a pause. And, and in that moment what can cause it to go away is almost like looking too directly at it. Almost like I can see it in my periphery if I don't focus on it, but if I try and define it, it disappears. Mm -hmm. And that is what Amad yeah. said reminded me of that. Uh, that in those moments, if I try and put words on it, describe it, define it, or even, even look directly at it, it goes away and I get distracted from it if instead I'm just feel it and be it without focusing on it. Mm -hmm. intentionally. Excellent. Okay. So thank you all. Um, I read an article where they talked about people who are distracted are the ones who, the most people who are distracted are the ones who are the ones. <laughs> the people who experience distraction the most are the ones who are overwhelmed the most. They have so much to do, their mind just keeps bouncing from here to here to here to here to here to here, and it's just distracting. So it's not really like they're intentionally trying to be distracted, but there's just really so much to do. Uh, people can comp compartmentalize their brains too, and let me just stick that over there, I'll come back to it, and that could be distracting as well because it just pops up. <clears throat> I know without disclosing too much, I know how sometimes you might have an event in your life and you're not really satisfied the way it has, so you kind of put it in the background and I'll, I'll handle that later, but then it keeps popping up. You know, you're sitting there watching TV and all of a sudden you get agitated again. Oh, dear. And oh, no, no, I'm not going to think about that. I'll put it away. Or, or then you get a text from the person perhaps. It, and so sometimes unresolved issues distract us. Therefore, cleaning up our unfinished business may be a way to help prevent us from having our distractions. There was a couple things that I wanted to pass on to you that were actually taught to me. You think I would be doing them, but they were. They were taught on to me, to me on how to practice not having uh, distractions, staying in the present moment as much as we can. Uh, one of the ones that was taught was you take matchsticks, but sometimes I use pens. You take nine of them. I don't remember why the nine, but I think nine was the spiritual number. And so you have them facing one way and you lay them down on the table. And what you do one at a time, you take it and turn it in the opposite direction. And you cannot think of anything other than the actions. I'm picking up the pen. I'm turning it around and placing it back in the table. I feel the table under my finger. I'm moving over to the next one. That's all you can do. If you get all the way, if you get like four or five and you start thinking of something else, you've got to stop and start over again. So the concept is to go all the way down and all the way back. Do you think that's an easy task? No. <laughs> it's not. Nine stupid pens. And you <laughs> so I actually started it with matchsticks. That's what George taught me was the matchsticks. And sometimes I'd get so upset, oh, dang it, and I'd break the stick. <laughs> so you have to get another matchstick. That's why I like the pens. So it's an easy thing. So you just turn it around and focus it in the other way. So you just try to focus on that. Another one um, that brings, helps bring us into the present moment is wiggling your toes. Your feet are supposed to be a symbol of being grounded or being present because our physical body is always in the present so when you discover you're being distracted wiggle your toes and that kind of brings your attention back in the other one and of course the last one which I love is chanting I introduced that in some classes the idea of chanting sound helps us stay focused and present as well humming is always very good as a matter of fact <clears throat> I'm going to call you out on this. <laughs> we were out shopping somewhere one day and I'm humming. And my husband says to me, why are you doing that? And I'm like, why? what's wrong with that? And he goes, humming, it's kind of like mommy dearest. I'm like, what? <laughs> like the bad lady? What are you talking about? And he's like, it's that eerie kind of, you know, psycho. Do, 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 because I'm humming. Like I'm coming to get you. Well, now I can't hum anymore because I think mommy dearest. Like what? Is, 
Who knew? But I've always hummed. Humming is something I've always taught ever since I was a little girl. Humming is very soothing. And I realized that when I'm humming, I'm in a pause moment as well. So now I intentionally hum just to get him annoyed. <laughs> so I'm forcing my hums now. And then I can't hum because I'm forcing it. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> While you're talking to them? Well, no, you are, you're basically, yes, you're talking, and then um, whatever reason, I mean, say for example, I'm talking to the third person, mm -hmm. and this person, the second person next to you is starting, mm -hmm. and it really actually irritates me so, so bad. Did I do that to you this morning? No, 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 no I always did. No, no, no. But I may have because I do that sometimes. If I'm no, a third party, I'll hum. No, 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 okay. No, 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 no. But I always thought this person basically is telling me to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm not interested in what is happening to the person. And because then he's, he's harming or she's harming, definitely he's not listening to what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And even though I'm talking to the third person, if you're present, at least give me the dig. I mean, the integrity to be quiet. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then they go, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> So for me, it has a negative foundation. <laughs> it probably is. <laughs> but I, on the opposite, I'm the person that if I am a third party and I know I'm not involved in the conversation, it has nothing to do with me, I, get, I feel awkward. And so sometimes I'll hum to soothe myself and not realize I'm doing it out loud. I'll try to do a, a low hum so that because I'm feeling like this is like, what do I do? I'm just standing here and I, I can't understand the conversation because it's nothing to do with me. As, if it's numbers, you all know I don't do good with numbers. So if you're having a financial conversation with numbers and my mind's out, I'm thinking Machu Picchu now because somebody was, so my mind's gone. And so I'll start humming. And that's why I said this morning, I know you guys were talking and I, there was a time when I looked out and I saw a hummingbird. I'm like, oh, look how pretty she is. And Oh, and then I know I caught myself humming a little bit. I'm like, oh wait, what are they talking about? <laughs> but I also know I'm very tired. <clears throat> so, not justifying it, but humming. Hey, that's right, hummingbird and humming. I love hummingbirds and I love humming. That was good. Thank you, Linda. <clears throat> and then, um, so I mentioned the wiggling the toes and the chanting. <clears throat> Mark passed me this note and said, if you really want to give yourself the gift of a pause, attend the satsang program. <laughs> Here's our little infomercial, August 16th to the 19th. So naturally, that's the whole concept of the satsang program, is to introduce pauses, which it just makes me laugh. I'm surrounded by all these places to do pause, and I'm, oh, i got to do this, got to do something. <clears throat> anyway. What I'm saying about, I don't want you to get the idea that I've always been struggling with pauses. This has just been recent, and that's why it's been on my mind. Like, what is going on with me? Why can't I just completely just go within it? <clears throat> so I wanted to take an opportunity and just talk about the pausing and how necessary it is. I know we know, but just because you know what to do doesn't mean that we do what we know what to do. So I'm going to challenge you for this month. If you show back up next month, be back here. If you show up next month, I want to know how many times you actually paused, recognized you were in the pause, and stayed in it. Like if you were able to do it, or did you fill it with distractions? And then I will check in to tell you that I actually meditated instead of just the act of getting to the meditation and coming back out. All right? Does that sound good? On Facebook, you better email me to me too. I'm talking to you, Aaron. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for tonight. Very nice to see you. I see you guys. I see you guys on Friday. I'll see you in two weeks <laughs> for the Omega Two. Remember, register for Omega Two. Send your friends, your family, people that you really don't like anymore. Send them to Omega Two. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Have a good night.